Hey, chiropractors, welcome to Modern Chiropractic Mastery with your host, Dr. Kevin Christie, where we discuss the latest in marketing, business, and professional growth with some of the leading experts in the industry. Hey, docs, welcome to another episode. And this one is a little unique. I've actually got two chiropractors on. Uh, they are practicing DCs in Michigan, and they're doing a great job in growing a practice that they uh, that they bought. And we're going to outline the process for what they've done uh, in buying a practice, transforming it. And then they've actually just recently moved in to a new office that they purchased and built out from scratch. And so they're going to go through this kind of three to four year journey that they've done. And it's, uh, you're going to get a lot from it, whether it's talking about, you know, buying a practice, transforming a practice that you're taking over, uh, marketing ideas. We, we go over a few gems, uh, such as what they've done with reviews and even uh, Instagram. And so you'll get some marketing out of this. You're going to hear about uh, the process of realizing you need bigger space and, and what that um, means and, and, and how to understand what you potentially are. It's costing you if you don't get into a bigger space. Uh, the process of buying, the process of designing and building out and moving in, like all kinds of just great information. And these two docs are um, partners in in their office and in life, and they're just doing amazing things. And so uh, what we've de- decided to do is have them both on. And so you're going to get to meet Dr. Ashley Jordan and Dr. Brittany Help, And we're going to talk about how they've grown their practice exponentially, and then the moves they're made with that growth. And I think you're going to get a lot out of that. Uh, before we dive into that episode and that interview, uh, I just want to make mention that, you know, our podcast listenership is is growing a lot this year. And, and I appreciate that. Um, I know uh, we've had quite a jump in the last three to four months. And so uh, I appreciate everybody that is uh, recommending the podcast to their colleagues. Uh, I, it, it does a wonders for um, for us to understand what you all need. And so every so often, you'll see me post in the Facebook group uh, questions or um, polls or asking about topics that people need. And so make sure to check out our Facebook group. And that is the Modern Chiropractic Marketing Group. Uh, We've got over 4,500 members. Uh, We try to keep it as spam free as possible and more of a think tank. And so check that out. Um, I'm always looking for ideas and you, the audience usually provides those for me. So I appreciate that. Uh, I thank you for recommending this podcast to other chiropractors. And so we'll keep on trying to provide you with great guests like I do today with Dr. Ashley Jordan and Dr. Brittany Help. And here's my interview with them. All right. Welcome to the show. I've got a great topic and I got a unique opportunity here to interview two people at the same time. And so before we dive into everything, kind of buying, growing, practice, uh, real estate, all the different topics we're going to dive into, uh, introduce ourselves, introduce yourselves to our show. All right. So first of all, we want to thank the CSA and uh, just coaching with Kevin and Kurt along the way that's helped us get in this crazy three years to where we're at. Um, I'm Dr. Ashley Jordan and- Um, Dr. Brittany Howe. And we are married and we've been practicing seven years since we've been out of school. Um, We practiced for the first four years out in Colorado, uh, one year with family. And then uh, we realized that we wanted to own and operate our own. So about three years ago, uh, we bought a practice, Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and it's been fun getting to know both of you through CSA and obviously the one-on-one work and, and seeing you grow. Um, I always like to kind of reverse engineer and, and see how we got to where we're at now. Uh, so actually, let's do this. Tell tell our audience uh, what you both just accomplished within the last month. Man, we just moved into a new spot that we were able to buy within three years of owning practice. So yeah been awesome yeah it doubled is. the size yes double yeah you doubled the size because you needed it right yep yeah yeah um so let me ask you a question based on that because 
you know, you both bought, so your partnership in practice, partnership in life, we've, we've had some of those uh, stories and there's a ton of pros to that. Uh, there's always some challenges along the way as well. Uh, but I think the pros outweigh the cons. And then you two were able to um, buy a, an existing practice. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And then we'll, we'll kind of work through the timeline there. Uh, cool. So first we'll go over some of the positives. So um, the previous owner didn't do long treatment plans. So that was a great thing for us because that's how we practice. Um, he also had a great referral network uh, with MDs in the area and pain management. So that's been great for us to be able to get our patients in when we need to. And then he even helped us transition for the first month. Um, it gave us a great base to build off of. And so then we had some great working cash flow when we first started. So, um, you know, we were able to kind of get settled in there. And over the course of, you know, buying the practice uh, over about three months, we officially owned it September of 2019. Um, one of the tougher parts that we felt was that, you know, we came in in May uh, right away and started treating. So rather than really working there um, as an associate for say a year, two years, three years. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of came in out of the blue and started um, treating the patients, which again, we had that uh, assistance, you know, he transitioned with us. He helped us, you know, introduce us to patients and the handoff was smooth. Um, but we felt like we lost about, uh, assuming maybe about 20% of people just because we showed up and it was somebody new. Um, and then we, uh, we kept the previous staff, which was good because they were kind of a liaison between us new doctors and the previous existing patients. Um, but with that previous staff, they function in an office in, in those workflows that they've had. And so it was good until it wasn't. And when we were ready to make some changes, um, you know, that was something that we uh, learned that we, you know, changed. We got uh, people who kind of aligned with what we, we're going for so yeah i think uh, what you did was you realize so there sounds like there's about a six month doctor transition uh give or take where he yeah. uh, slowly morphed out so that gave some time to build some rapport with patients which is good uh and then you were both uh, smart enough not to just pull a rug out from underneath the whole practice and try to make it exactly how you wanted it uh which is fascinating that's like why, why i kind of mentioned reverse engineering it because uh, three years later, you now have designed the practice exactly how you want it, but you, you did it slowly, you know, and, and you did it appropriately. I think losing 20% of your patient base is, is, is pretty decent, uh, given all things. And it sounds like you, you bought a practice that was, um, sellable to the point where, you know, you could grow it. And then subsequently when you did take over, which is, which is fascinating when you took over the end of 2019, because obviously things got a little hairy after that. Uh, but tell us the, uh, I'm put you on a spot a little bit, but tell us the growth you had from say, uh, September, 2019, uh, up until this point, uh, you know, it doesn't not revenue, but just from like, you know, the type of patients that you're getting, uh, types of new patients per month you're getting and, and office visits and things like that. Um, well, I would, I mean, early on, you know, that timeline, we didn't, we didn't have the CSA, so we didn't keep track of numbers quite like we do now. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, since we've been keeping track of the numbers and I would say post COVID, uh, initial two months. Uh, so mm -hmm. June, 2020 is a fair place to look at. We, you know, started growing and mm -hmm. we started to see 30, 35 new patients. And it's only gone up from there. When we first started, how many new, I don't even know if we could. We're probably in the twenties, maybe 20s. 30 when we first started mm -hmm. um, seeing like five to maybe hit 600 patient visits in a month. And now we're hitting 40 to 50 new patients a month with eight to 900 follow-ups. All those so, visits in a, in a yeah. month. Yeah. So substantial growth, which, uh, you know, it's great. And, but then it led to a problem, right? And that was kind of the, the office that the practice came with is since essentially the lease you took over. Um, the, the practice just became the, or let me say the, the office space became the bottleneck where uh, you were running out of space and you couldn't really hire 
Uh, tell us about that realization. Yeah, we only had three rooms, so we were on top of each other. Um, we like to do rehab. We didn't have any space to be able to hire anyone to have them perform the rehab or even us. Um, the rooms were small, um, so we were able to realize that we definitely needed to get a bigger space with that. Yeah, I think every episode when we, we try to uh, extract some nuggets from the from the story and so obviously in this episode we'll we'll hear your story and uh and, and we'll spotlight some of the, the the nuggets out of that and i think one of them is the fact that too many chiropractors uh, their office space becomes the hindrance of of growth because uh, you can't see the proper amount of people that you could you can't hire the proper team that you may need and, and it can become a big bottleneck and so i want chiropractors that are listening to this, uh, to start thinking of that, like, are you starting to see either currently or in the near future that your space is, is becoming a, a burden on you, uh, for growth. And that was something that you both recognize. I know we talked a lot about it, uh, and it can be a very, um, frustrating, uh, scary, uh, kind of almost sometimes hopeless feeling. Could you talk about that a little bit, Brittany? Um, so when we got there, you know, we were not nearly as busy as we grew to be. And so, you know, we could ebb and flow. We also really started using uh, scheduled appointments uh, mm -hmm. when COVID hit because we wanted to make sure that we didn't have, you know, a 3 p.m. rush of people coming through after work and, you know, a bunch of people in the waiting room. So we took we actually used that to our advantage to help, you know, guide timing. Uh, because we did not have the extra room. And then, you know, it got to where we're getting booked, we're getting busy, we have to have the appointments so we can fit everybody that we want to. And then the parking lot got full and people had to wait for people to leave. Um, but there's still only two of us and there's three rooms. And so, you know, we had to uh, kind of come to terms with how creative can we be? What do we need to do? Can we rework the space we're in? And we kind of came to the conclusion there wasn't going to be a way to save, you know, where we were and, mm -hmm. and make it work for us. Even if we totally remodeled it, it wasn't going to give us those options. Um, so as you know, we got around the two year mark uh, before our lease ended, we started to really come to that understanding and, you know, started to have our eyes open around town and see mm -hmm. what's available. What are some options? Um, mm -hmm and then just kind of start working that concept of what do we want? So we started again, one year into a three-year lease, <laughs> looking at what kind of, what is supposed to happen? What yeah. are we meant to land in? And I want to table, I want to table that for a second, as far as the, you were two years out from the end of the lease, and we're going to definitely get to that. But um, I wouldn't mind actually kind of talk to us because, you know, you mentioned the CSA, but I really give you two the, the credit because you actually did the work. Uh, what were some of the marketing things you did to, to really exponentially grow the, the practice? Um, we definitely started with the content marketing. We don't have a crazy following, but we post consistently. Um, we make sure that we're doing blogs. We definitely do a ton on Google. Mm -hmm. And those have been huge uh, things for us, as well as even MD marketing, you know, that's been awesome because what's better than having a patient walk in that their MD told them to come, they're going to follow through with whatever you tell them. It makes it so much easier. Um, so those things have helped us a ton. Um, yeah. You, you, that medical referral has a level of super credibility to it for sure. Yeah. So that's been super good. Um, the content marketing and videos, did not start out very glamorous. <laughs> they were basic. Yours truly edited them. I wanted to pull my hair out. And, you know, we kind of worked through those growing pains while COVID was going on. It was slow. Yeah. We had like seven people come in, two of which were crazy broken. So you're kind of in a stressful situation where you're trying to fix who's coming in. And, mm -hmm. but then you're, you've got a lot of time. So that's when the CSA came into play to give us something to work on and to, struggle with video until it became easier and you learn what matters which is lighting <laughs> <That's it. laughs> hey, yes. that was our big thing new building number one 
make us look beautiful. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah, the lighting's important, the audio. But you know, you you both stuck with the consistency of it, and and you got better. You learned what was working. You started uh, delegating some of it, but through all of that, you were super consistent with your video marketing. And that was kind of your platform. You've done a lot. And then, you know, I know we talk a lot about it. You use YouTube as a platform. You're now using IG Reels, which is doing really well. Talk to us a little bit about IG Reels. Yeah. So we've been having some fun with those lately. <laughs> um, we've been posting a couple a day. So yep. the biggest thing that I can suggest is make sure that you batch them. We spend one hour one day a week and get all of our reels definitely ready for the week. But even if we plan ahead, I try to be at least a month ahead on all of our videos. Yeah. Um, just because you have so much other stuff going on trying to run a business that if you can just be ahead and all you got to do is post, it makes everything so much easier. Yeah. With, with the reels, it, is been, it has been a little bit tricky in terms of batching. You can do that, but you got to watch and see what trends and when it is trending because you might miss it. You can't quite be a whole month ahead as much as we'd like to. So, you know, it's um, that's one piece. You know, you can't be totally, totally ahead, but you got to be with what's happening. The other yeah. thing that's really helped, I think, is uh, definitely outsourcing the editing. You know, mm -hmm. we do use Network DC and they've been good for us we shoot over video and he does all of our editing so yeah outsourcing is, is always always important and i'll probably need to do a whole episode on instagram reels because i've talked to a few chiropractors that are doing well with it so uh that's another nugget from this episode is start looking into reels i'll probably have someone on where we dive into the uh, kind of nitty gritty of that. Um, now, the other thing I think that's helped your practice is don't you have, uh, I think you just hit the 1 million mark on Google reviews. <laughs> hey, actually coming in hot yesterday, we hit 700. So. 700? 700. Yeah. 700. So that's helped us. That's helped us a ton, but yeah. it didn't happen overnight. You know, it took tell, implementing a system and yeah. tell me how many, how many Google reviews did you have when you took over the practice? Oh, like four. Four, right so yeah and go yeah and, i was gonna and, say google wasn't even claimed it wasn't oh. it wasn't anything we had to claim it so i mean really that's impressive you know like and that's what's anybody out there that ends up buying a practice you know you will find these little things where it's like oh there's some low-hanging fruit and the previous doc didn't even claim the google my business and then now a couple years later a few years later you have 700 Google reviews. So I think it's just a testament to the fact that you both are very consistent uh, in what it takes to actually move the needle. You know, I talked to so many chiropractors where they're like, they know in their heart of hearts, what would work to grow their practice, but they still don't do it. Uh, you both knew in your heart of hearts, what would grow it and you actually did it. And that's why we're seeing this. So cool. 700. That's, I think that might be the most, uh, Google reviews for chiropractors that I've had on my podcast. So congrats. Hey, winner. I mean, it didn't, ha like I said, it didn't happen overnight. It took a, a system. And mm -hmm. if, if we use review wave, if they just send the review wave text out and we don't yeah. mention it to people, we might get one a week, but yeah. when we make sure we have a system on telling them the text is coming and mm -hmm. that they help us, they've doubled, tripled yeah. what we get. So just implementing a system and sticking to it has helped us with that yeah, for sure. If, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said, okay, pre-review wave, you were getting a good amount of Google reviews by asking and then yep. adding review wave, um, but only letting them get the prompt via text was about one a week or so. But then when you layered yeah. on going back to mentioning it to them that they're going to get a text, that's when it really amplified. Yeah, we aim for 15 to 20 a month and we've gotten yeah. it every yeah. single month. So. And what, how do you, like, how do you say it to the patients? Like, oh, you're going to get a text message. Could you, how do you word that? Yeah, on our visit too, we make mm -hmm. sure as we're walking them up, hey, if you are super happy with your visit, our text service is going to send you a link. If you could leave us a Google review, mm -hmm. they help us a ton. And yeah. that's it. And it's working, and obviously, 15 to 20 yeah. a month is, is substantial. And I think that's probably another large nugget out of this episode is, uh, is that right there. So uh, thank you for that. That's cool. Um, soon enough, you'll be at a million, but uh, <laughs> hey. good job. Good we'll job. <laughs>
All right, Docs, here is a new opportunity for you from Darcy Sullivan of Propel. She is our SEO specialist in helping out many chiropractors uh, with their search engine optimization and making sure Google is finding you and getting you new patients. It's amazing how many new patients chiropractors can get and are getting when they do uh, the SEO right and a few other things. And Darcy is offering a free SEO workshop just for chiropractors, and you can sign up for that at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Propel M-C-M. That is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, Propel M-C-M, Modern Chiropractic Marketing, right? And so check out that link, and we're going to have you go over five SEO secrets to owning the first page of Google uh, without buying ads. And Darcy's going to give that free workshop one hour to really help grow your practice and start churning new patients from the ever mighty Google, which is still king in the online marketing. So check that out at bit.ly slash propel MCM for the one hour free workshop. Hey doc, are you moving office spaces or you're a startup with your own new space or you're like me where you need renovations because it's starting to look a little worn after about 10 years like ours is? Um, Crossfields Chiropractic Office Design is here to elevate you wherever you're at and they're going to help maximize your space and flow. They're going to really help attract and retain patients. And this is going to have a great ROI on your investment when you increase that patient experience. So check out Chiropractic Office Designs by Crossfields. And we have a special link for modern chiropractic marketing listeners. And that is www.chiropracticofficedesign.com slash Kevin Dash Christy. And with that, you're going to have discounts. We're going to have direct links to a mega bundle of free resources. And you can check them out. And you can get 15 of our most popular floor plans, five-phase checklist for a startup office, five-point designer checklist to evaluate your current office image. And there's 30% off on all online products when you go to www.chiropracticofficedesign.com slash Kevin dash Christy. All right. So let's go back to um, the two year mark. So I get this uh, problem quite a bit, whether it's someone that reaches out to me or they're on the podcast or it's a client and it's that whole space issue that we talked about. And uh, too many times they come to me and they're really on a uh, timeline crunch as far as when their uh, lease is up and their options. Uh, tell us, uh, you, you know, we left it off where you were two years prior to the end of your lease. And that probably seemed too long out to start the planning, uh, but, it, but it wasn't. And so tell us, let's go back to that two years ago and, and have that conversation of, of the process. So, I mean, taking on the new practice, we didn't want to purchase the building right away because we didn't want the risk associated yeah. with also trying to take on the people and, and, well, if we own a building too, and the people don't like us now, what? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we went with the lease option and after a year we said, okay, I think we're going to have an issue. What are we going to do? So we, can we make it work? We decided we can't. So, okay, what do we want? And brainstorming that and, you know, letting it grow and come up with those ideas and, and brainstorm to where, you know, we look, there's a couple buildings that were very close to our other uh, location. Mm -hmm. uh, the price ranges were just completely, you know, unrealistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we considered doing a lease over there just because it was super close, uh, you know, 200 yards right or 200 yards left. Mm -hmm. um, but even then it was like, and it didn't feel perfect what was available uh it, a huge undertaking for buying the building for the price so we just kept looking and yeah. we found one that we liked that was diagonal across town i mean it was uh, probably take you eight to ten minutes to get to the far end of town but it was a good space well then it wasn't the best space and we had to work it too hard we tried getting mm -hmm. an architect in there to help us draw it out and and it felt like a square peg to a round hole. You know, yeah. we wanted it, had great parking, good visibility, option for the gym space, but then the office side felt small. So mm -hmm. we wanted it, we wanted it, or can we work it? And then it, and then this one that we're in now, a uh, patient said, hey, there's one there over in the middle of town. Um, mm -hmm. And so we went and looked and we just, we were grinding on it, making say, okay, yep, this is a good space. What can we save? So we don't have to completely gut it. Yep. Um, and then that's when we started uh, 
working through that buying process. But I mean, to that point was probably almost almost a year, probably probably more like six to nine months since we you know said, okay, we're going to need a different plan. You know, so we found this building June twenty twenty one. June, 2021, right? Yep. Ish. So, yeah. Almost, almost a year ago. And I remember mm-hmm. when we had these conversations it was like, you know, cause I think one of the early concerns that you had was what if we find something too quickly and then we still have, you know, eight months left on our old lease. And I remember having a conversation around that. I was like, that would kind of be okay. Right. Like if you had some still meat on the bone on the old lease, uh, that is a better problem than running out of time. And so, and then usually uh, things take longer than we expect on construction and stuff like that. So I know we had a conversation around, well, let's be prepared financially from a cash flow standpoint. If you had to pay the lease every month at the old place for four months or something like that, right? Because in the long run, being able to buy your own space and the money that you're going to get from appreciation you save and the money you will make in your current location because you don't have the bottleneck will supersede the let's just I'm just going to make up number 3000 a month in rent you had to pay for the old place right i remember yeah. going through that myself where i was like look i need new space if i get into new space i think i can see x amount more people that i'm not able to see now because of the limited space that equals x amount of money per month that easily covers having to pay rent at the other place and my mortgage at this place. And, uh, and I'm not sure, I forget if this is the case for you. A lot of times when you get these loans for your commercial real estate, there is a time frame where you don't even pay on the mortgage. Is that, is that the case for you too? Yeah, we made sure that it lined up. So when our lease does end, then we'll be starting to pay the full mortgage here. So we plan that accordingly for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And that, that timeline, uh, we officially bought the building. Closing was beginning of October. Mm -hmm. And our lease is through the end of September this year. So 2021 to 2022, we have a full year of interest only, which in the front end, it's still most of the payment, but it's at least less than everything. So they were able to do that um, Mm -hmm. for a full year. Uh, yeah, typically in the com- in the commercial, because a lot of people haven't done commercial uh, mortgages, it's really completely different than residential mortgages. And I've and I've had that conversation with other chiropractors where um, you know they're they're a little mistaken on the details of it. You can't put, you know, there's no first time home buyers type of situation for commercial where you can put three percent down or anything like that. It's typically higher percentage down. You got, I mean, they're gonna nitpick the heck out of your business and personal finances to the nth degree. And, but there's going to be some wiggle room because they know there's construction. So if you close on the loan on whatever, you're probably not paying on the mortgage for six to 12 months because they know there's this period of time of construction that can get delayed. And then they want you to get in there. Like they're trying to give you the best opportunity to grow into this uh, space as a business. So they don't hammer you with the mortgage right away. So you do get some wiggle room. So, um, and, and, you know, and one of the things I want to give a testament to you too, is because just because you want to buy a place, uh, and your, and your practice is doing well, it doesn't mean it, it can just happen. Like you really have to be financially, um, you, you really have to be smart about it. And you almost have to be conservative about what you're spending because you really need to tuck away some cash for down payments. You really need to show that you can not only make the down payment on the loan, but that you still have some money left in the bank, right? Like sometimes people forget that part of it too, where it's like, okay, I could put $70,000 down on this, but I've got $72,000. The bank doesn't like to look to say, oh, okay, once you give us a 70, you're broke and now you're a high risk. So uh, it definitely takes some capital to to make it happen. Um, Did you go through the SBA? Was that correct? We didn't, we started the process and it was too slow. So Mm -hmm. the guy that we bought the building from wanted to close in three months and that included our construction Mm -hmm. um, loan as well. And there was no way that the SBA, because it was COVID, I think they were like 12 or 14 weeks out or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were lucky to be able to go the conventional route. Good. 
good. Yeah. I remember when I, I did SBA back in 2013 for my space and it was who I started the process in early February and it closed in mid June. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't three months. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So SBA has got some levels of protection, some benefits as far as how much you have to put down, things like that. But it's a, it's a, it's a tough, tough process, but definitely viable for, for many people. So, um, all right, perfect. So what I want to do now is kind of segue a little bit, uh, to the fact, okay, you got, you, you know, you did the whole thing, you got the process, you found the space, you, you did the, the build out, uh, tell us a little bit about the process of, okay, we closed the loan, and then from that period of time until when you opened, what was some of the things I know you and I, uh, the three of us talked a lot about, I just said, be prepared for the, you know, the, the shit in the fan, the hiccups, the frustrations, the, you know, all that, but tell us about the process for you. Um, so we started out with using cross fields actually mm -hmm. to go through the process, which was awesome because um, when we were doing all of this was during our, the summertime is our busiest time of year. So, and that's when all of this was happening. So kind of, we, I told patients this week, the couple of things that we picked out for sure were the grays, the shiplap, the barn doors, and as big a gym as possible. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we kind of let them do what they suggested for the space. And um, it took a lot of pressure off us. Um, so Crossfields did a great job. Um, and then we also had a, I think we got three or four different bids from different construction companies. Um, mm -hmm. There was a couple big ones in our areas that cost a lot of money. Um, and then we actually went with one of the smaller ones because we weren't in a time crunch. Yep. Um, and doing that, they were still able to do a great job, but they saved us enough money to actually be able to uh, include the roof. So mm -hmm um yeah we're pretty happy with how that worked out yeah um, i think that's another key part of it and is that you got to get multiple bids uh and and it's shocking sometimes how different the bids can be for basically the same work like it's i almost feel like sometimes it's a complete crapshoot what they're bidding on like how how much they're quoting because i remember doing that and i was just like how can you be that far off for the same thing right so, yeah uh, obviously make sure they're reputable uh, a lot of times the banks will make sure they're reputable as well like they will not uh, allow you to go with other contractors uh, so that's obviously uh, important as well so, yeah, cool. yeah good yeah and so everything was actually on time right yeah we were very, very happy. They started in January and they were done mm -hmm. mid-March and we were in here April. Um, so we couldn't be more happy with the timeline. Everyone talks about the nightmares and for whatever reason, we were lucky enough to have it go smooth. So, Well, you, I think you outsourced appropriately. Um, it's, it seems like you had a good contractor that was uh, accountable, right? A lot of times they take on too much work and then they just drag things out. And then sometimes, frankly, it's bad luck uh, with, with certain um, zoning things and inspections. Like it can be frustrating. It's not the contractor's fault. Like I ran into a couple of things. The city of Boca Raton was, was a mess. And so the contractor couldn't take the next step until they actually came and did the inspection. And then it was like, they're dragging their feet on the inspection. So sometimes it's the city as well, which can be frustrating. So perfect. All right. So any other thoughts on the in-between of close and, and, and uh, when you moved in and then that, then we'll transition into uh, telling us about your space. Um, we just, you know, we asked the questions to whoever need we ask and make sure we got answers. Mm -hmm. If we had a thought, we voiced it because you don't know, you can catch things on the early end of it and rather than having to have a mistake at the tail end. And so um, we were definitely busy on lunch through that time. You know, we'd come over and look, but we really didn't get in the way. But, you know, we catch some things. We're like, is that is that right? And then it's a quick change, easy before you do the final walkthrough and you're like, uh, that's not supposed to be there. You know, so we stayed involved, but we stayed out of the way. And um, you know, working with uh, the contractor and accountant and you guys just making sure we're not missing anything. So you had great communication it. with all the, all the different people around you, which is good. Yeah. So, perfect. Yeah. All right. So um, one of the things that your new space has allowed for is hiring. So tell us about that. Yeah. that was something we couldn't do before the new space. Yeah, for sure. So we're super excited. Uh, we got 
uh, massage starts on Monday. So we're pumped about that. Mm -hmm. um, our patients are super excited. They've been asking for it. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the big thing that we are so pumped about is we got between five and 600 square feet of gym. So we were able to add in a trainer and it's been going awesome already within Good. these first couple of weeks. So, yeah. And that goes back to what we talked about where, you know, if you didn't get out of that space, if you didn't go through all the challenging things over the last year or two, um, you really, you would have been limiting your, uh, income and, and profit potential because of that. Now you can do that. And I know, uh, in the not too distant future, um, you're going to bring on an associate well as well, because it's needed. Yeah, that kind of happened crazy over the last couple of weeks. Like mm -hmm. we, we can't get people in that need to be able to get in. So mm -hmm. we're very excited to bring someone to the team. So Yeah, and it's been great. You know, like I know, Ashley, you and, and Dr. Michael Nelson did a CSA lesson, CSA virtual summit lesson with me on space. And at the time you were in the process of it and he had wrapped his up a year ago. And one of the things that I've seen now that yours is finished and you're in, and he has been for a while, is the uh, energy in the practice is more, the excitement, the growth right away. Kind of, you you kind of have this vacuum that's created because you have more space and staff and like you can start seeing more people up to a certain point because now even with two docs, you, you two are, are almost are essentially maxed out. And so now it's time to hire, but you don't have to worry about do we have the space for it? You just got to make sure you have the patience for it and obviously the cash flow uh, to, to handle it. And so that's an exciting next step that we'll obviously work through. Yeah, for sure. We've been talking a lot this week just about we feel like we're waking up and like living our ultimate dream. So yeah, that's cool. It's now, been an awesome process. You mentioned the gym and, and that's great. Give us a like if you were describing, I know it's a standalone building. You got some uh, some land around it with plenty of park. Like give us the whole kit and caboodle of this space for me. Yeah, so we got 5,000 square feet. Currently, we are operating out of 2,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to rent out the uh, 1,300 square feet up front. And then the other 1,200 in the back, um, we got a guy that's leasing out for two years. But when he's done, uh, we're hoping to be able to turn that into a full gym. So um, the goal is to be able to go full clinic gym hybrid in the next couple of years. Nice. So, but that at least takes some of the pressure off financially by having that income coming in there. And then you can grow into the, the gym side of things. For sure. So good, good. Brittany, what are you, what are some of the things of the practice that you really are enjoying about the new space? Um, well, I don't cringe when the, uh, older population leaves the office and I feel like they're going to get schmucked by a car because it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's still a busy street, but there's a, there's a stoplight available. So, I mean, small things, but people are definitely appreciative at, mm -hmm. you know, rush hour, they can get out. Um, you know, we do have, uh, good parking and, you know, we have a, a second lot next to us. So if we need an additional parking lot, or we want to put another building over there in the future it's there mm -hmm. um with the space we're we're on one side of the building from front to back and you know with the construction we tried to leave what we could yeah. and so you know the rooms um they were a good size uh, and and through the back we were able to kind of put it to where the gym space was next to the adjusting rooms so that we can walk out show an exercise or a stretch that we want to have somebody take home and do right away even if it's not a full rehab session but it's um it's a lot nicer than a, a elastic band on a doorknob yeah and it's just it's about the patient no it's about the patient flow you know we do the same thing and, and sometimes you'll see situations where you got to walk you know 30 yards to get to the little rehab area and, and it can be tricky uh, and, and that setup of your flow is, is really, really good. So, uh, and that goes to being strategic in the architectural process, right? That's so. why you outsource it. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. They make out. that decision. <laughs> yeah, I always joke around. I, somewhere I have the uh, plans that I drew out for myself. And thank God I didn't go with that. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely, definitely an issue. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, city and state you're in. We are in Bay City, Michigan. So um, uh, it's small city. There's, I think, uh, 
in the city itself, like 35,000, but in the, the Bay County or Tri-Cities area about, uh, I think it's somewhere 75,000, 100,000 people or so. Um, we're kind of halfway up the state. So we like it because we can go up north uh, and it's about an hour for us, but then, you know, two hours down to Detroit um, so we can fly out and go somewhere and then a two hour drive. It's not easy, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a spot where, um, you know, it's a busy little city, uh, yeah. honestly, yeah. they it's active. So that's good. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit because, you know, you guys have 5,000 square feet and, and all that and very nice and, and, and plenty of uh, space around with parking. And I just want our listeners to know that buying a space may look different in, in your area. Like I know for me, where I wanted to have my practice in Boca Raton, really very almost impossible to buy a standalone building. If you go to a different part of the city, there are some, but it, it's really for the millionaires uh, in that area. Um, and so, you know, for me, I, I purchased a, a condo inside of a medical building. And so uh, for our audience, depending where you're at it, it may look like um, a condo. It may look like a standalone building that's got multiple units. It may be, it could be a house. Like there's some areas, there's this one doc I know, uh, a few towns down from me, it's an area that's zoned residential and commercial. And he, he, and he has a house that's converted to a chiropractic office, which is amazing. Like it's just so charming. So there's a lot of different ways to slice it. And uh, your, your chiropractic income may go further in certain areas than, than others. And then honestly, sometimes it's just not feasible. Like if you're in, uh, you know, New York city or San Francisco downtown, probably not buying your your real estate but <clears throat> i think you can learn from flow of an office space things like that but uh, it's just exciting to see how you two have grown into something that's going to bear fruit for a very long time I would, one of the thoughts i was just having was that like when we were looking at what we wanted to purchase we wanted to uh, feel confident that we could uh, pay the mortgage our, on our own and that yes being able to lease out 1200 square feet is awesome and it's you know bonus bucks uh but we're not stressed to get somebody in there right away and we can be patient for a good fit that's not going to be um you know distracting uh or taking away from our business uh but we can get a good a good professional fit in there and it'll be again beneficial but not needed yeah no it's huge and honestly it was an early mistake that i made but you're right. Like you need to be able to afford the whole thing yourselves. And then anybody else renting is just cherry on top. Right. Like, and I remember I had, I had bought mine in 2013 and I was like, I really need to sublet out two rooms. This, like I, I was doing it all with the mind is like, I needed to sublet out and then it didn't work out right away. And this, that, and the other thing. And it was, it was a little stressful at the time. And then it was fine and, and it worked out. And then now I sublet out, but it's more of just because it's nice. Uh, versus versus having to so that's that's a great point so thank you for bringing that up uh, for sure now and it goes back to you both being very fiscally responsible and even to the point where Brittany you just mentioned about bringing in the right people and I know the three of us have talked about the idea of bringing in a really good congruent physical therapy group at some point to sublet but then to also help feed the clinic gym hybrid model which I thought was genius of you, of you two to think of that. So uh, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, so we got the 2,500 square feet on one side and it opens up um, with one door into mm. the spot that would be the, the gym part. Um, yep. We would love to be able to get a PT group that shares the same vision as us mm -hmm. um, to rent on the other side. So then we can both feed that gym and then it takes some of the pressure off of us um, as far as feeding the patients and as far as running a business. So yep. it's just trying to find uh, that right fit that uh, believes that every patient should be uh, squatting and deadlifting and all of those things. So we're trying to find that right fit. And it'll be a perfect kind of triangle where, you know, I just had Dr. Anthony Hussein on and he talked about the messaging around MD referrals. And it was about, you know, just because someone goes through physical therapy, if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean it's a failure of conservative care. They, and a lot of times those people are still non-surgical. So they, they really need a second option 
for conservative care. Just like I know when I get patients in my office and I don't get them better, I'm looking at, okay, what, what else can we try from a conservative uh, aspect? And it could be the same thing. If, if you have your practice in there, you've got the gym model, and then you've got the physical therapist. If, if the physical therapist has a patient that doesn't respond, they could refer you to over the chiropractic side of things. If someone's not responding to you, you could refer them over to PT and then everybody can refer to the gym. And so it becomes this really good teamwork that could be very beneficial for the patient first and then for the entities that are in there. For sure. That's actually what we send a, a guy in town right now um, that just recently opened up and he actually sent us a gift today because of the people mm -hmm. that we've sent him in just the, the last month. So um, that's definitely something that we take pride in is if we're not getting someone better, get them to where they need to be. Definitely, um, People definitely. appreciate it. They do. They do. This is exciting. You both uh, have worked hard. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. I know you've been practicing for seven years or so, and then obviously uh, small business owners for a few of those, and you're starting to, to really see the benefits of it. And it'll be a fun journey after this. So for sure. Cool. Any, any last words of advice for our audience? Um, a big thing that I like to say is if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong dang room. So keep surrounding yourself with, uh, with good evidence-based clinicians and ask questions. You've been great to us, Kurt, reach out to people. A lot of, of the older, not that I'm calling you old or anything. Hey, 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 older, seasoned, <laughs> seasoned veterans, seasoned veterans. A lot veterans. of the vet, uh, evidence-based chiropractors, they, mm -hmm. they love to just be able to help. So feel free, ask the questions. And that's, that's, what's definitely, I think made us grow the most is mm -hmm. being vulnerable, ask when you need help. And it's been great. So. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's about having that big beginner's mind, not being left on an Island and, and surrounding yourself with a, a group of like-minded people. And I know when, when Bobby, maybe, and I put together the CSA, it was stories like these that we were hoping to have. And, and again, it's, it's more of a testament to you two. Uh, but we're just trying to put the framework there to, to help follow, but you, you definitely put in the work. So I congratulate both of you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank so, you. Definitely. And, uh, if someone wanted to reach out just to ask a couple of questions based on what we talked about today, how could they reach out? Uh, we're pretty active on Instagram. So a good place to reach out is lake underscore effect underscore chiropractic. And, uh, we'll gladly get back to you and answer any questions that we can. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you so much for your time. For sure. Cool. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you. That is it for this week's episode. But before you leave, check us out at www.modernchiropracticmarketing.com for all kinds of free resources such as blogs and the podcast episodes. We've got online courses. You can check out the Chiropractic Success Academy there, which is an amazing online coaching system for you at a very affordable monthly rate. Uh, there's a free online course on the modernchiropracticmarketing.com website, so check that out. If you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one coaching, we can do that as well. We have all kinds of resources for you there, and we would also truly appreciate if you could rate and review this podcast if you're getting valuable information out of it. I can't thank you enough, and we'll see you next week.